Mall of America. For more than 30 years, it has been a retail leader and an international destination, and it remains the largest mall in the U.S. Not to mention it welcomes millions of guests from around the world. It's huge, but it's also so much more. In this podcast, you're going to hear the real stories of how it started and why it continues to thrive. You'll hear about challenges we faced along the way and what you can learn from them. We will feature guests and experts from all walks of life and business, and along the way, you'll laugh, learn, and maybe even change the way you look at things. So if you're a fan of the mall, a brand new visitor, an entrepreneur, or a dreamer, prepare to dive deep into so much more. This podcast is presented by the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome to so much more, a Mall of America podcast. I am your host today, Jill Renslow. I'm the Chief Business Development and Marketing Officer at Mall of America. And I am so excited to have our guests with us today. They're our friends and partners of Mall of America for over 30 years. They work closely with us on some of our biggest events and projects, including Super Bowl 52, Final Four, and currently helping us move forward on our water park project to the north of the mall. So please welcome Bonnie Carlson, the President and CEO, and Jen Crails, the Vice President of Marketing for the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome, Bonnie and Jan. Oh, <laughs> Lots of applause. Thank oh, you. I love it. So <laughs> nice to be here. I love it. And of course, Dan, my co-host today, who is the SVP of MOA Press. You have heard and seen him before, so we're excited to have Dan back for this exciting conversation we have planned today. Thank you. You and I, Jill, have had the pleasure and opportunity to work with these fine ladies for years now, we know them really well. We consider them our friends and they are our key partners. So welcome. And not only key partner in our overall business, but they have stepped forward to sponsor our podcast and believe in us and trust in our direction moving forward. So thank you for your ongoing support. We really appreciate Absolutely. it. So we are gonna get started. So Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau, you are responsible for marketing the city of Bloomington to the world, right? So you guys talk about Bloomington probably in your sleep um, <laughs> with all the meetings that you have with so many different partners and tour operators and experts around the world. So we're going to get started by just learning a little bit about Bloomington. So Bonnie, I'm going to start with you. These are just short, little quick question answer. Okay. What's the most frequent asked question from travelers about Bloomington? Where is it? No, really. <laughs> yep. uh, I love it. <laughs> that, that could be one. Or um, is the mall really that big? I get that one too. Yeah. Well, hopefully your answer is yes, yes of course. But, um, user friendly, on no entrance is more than 300. Uh, yep. No no parking is more than 300 feet away from an entrance. Yeah, I you're close to an right. entrance all the time. That's right. That's Absolutely. Right. Okay, Jam, what's the best time of year to visit Bloomington, Minnesota? Oh, wow. Um, you know, personally, I love summer, but I think we're a fabulous March spring break getaway. As much as we think people are going to warm destinations, mm -hmm. I love to come do Mall of America. It's a perfect time of year to do it. Um, fall's always beautiful, but Christmas still has a, a soft yeah. spot in my heart. So more or less all year round. All year round. <laughs> love it. Something all year perfect round. answer. She kind of covered all those seasons. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. But, but I think just to the spring break, I don't think people think of it like Bloomington, Minnesota, Mall of America. That is like one of the biggest and most yep. popular times. Most so. definitely. We yeah. see license plates from across the country oh, over spring break, which is fun to see all the families come and travel here. So, Bonnie, what is your favorite hidden gem in the city? Oh, gosh. Uh, there are a couple of little neighborhood bars, little um, hamburger joints that you would never find unless you know them. And... Um, I mean, like, seriously, in a neighborhood. And so those are fun. And prior to, you know, we had um, David Fong's, which just yeah. closed, unfortunately. Um, but after uh, 60 years of family-owned business. So um, that was always kind of a good, uh, good find. And um, lastly, I think there's a Normandale Lake, you know, which isn't too far mm -hmm. from here. And a lot of people don't know that that sits kind of, the backdrop is a ski hill, yeah. and so a we'll walk around there is just very peaceful. And little hidden gems that, you know, you see the traffic or the hotels or whatever, but they, they are sort of positioned right in between. That's great. Yeah, that's, that's great. great. Okay, Jan, you're up. Okay. Being the marketing guru that you are, what is okay. the most Instagram-worthy spot in the city? Oh, wow. Um, 
other than Mall of America, or do I get two choices? We'll take the number one spot, okay. but you can. <laughs> well, what's course. the number two? Of course, there's great um, spots in Mall of America. And actually, we're doing a photo shoot tomorrow of our yep. Instagram um, worthy uh, locations. I like to think a little hidden gem is Normandale Community College, the Japanese Gardens, oh, yes. which is located yes. behind the college, mm -hmm. which is a great little find and treasure. Very peaceful. It's beautiful. Um, the Wildlife Refuge, which is just uh, a stone throw away, right, from Mall yeah. of America and our airport. But it is a beautiful um, part of nature and part of yeah. our federal um, reserve. So we're very lucky to have it right on our doorsteps. You can actually walk down the Wildlife Refuge. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people know that. And you can down by the river. It takes yes. you down there and see some of the most iconic birds in Minnesota mm -hmm. and wildlife. And um, not every city has that. So, and I think the iconic, which I get the fortune, or I'm very fortunate to watch it every day, right outside the window is the Mall Star, right? Yeah, I mean, right. Millions <laughs> of people are literally in front of that Mall Star it, every day. There's guests that stop it's in front of that mm -hmm. giant sculpture yeah. and take photos and selfies. It's awesome. As we look out the windows, maybe. and we yeah. see that. Yeah, yeah. they're always uh, out there. We've that actually done that too. Yeah. So it is a, yeah. a fan favorite. Yeah. Bonnie, what is the best way for visitors to experience the local culture and community? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I think they should go to our website and see what's local. That would be first. But um, I really think we have some great itineraries for families. So, for example, uh, come to the hotel, start at the Mall of America, venture out on the walks that I had just mentioned, either the Wildlife Refuge or even at Normandale Japanese Gardens. And we're also very, very close to uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul in the lakes. So that comes in as well. So I think you can do it all. And it's all very convenient. So Sounds good. And Jan, for first-time visitors to Bloomington, what is your number one tip for them? You know, it, uh, the Mall of America is very manageable, right? And it, we're such a convenient location. Yep. So you can get here by air buy a road trip, and it's so convenient. Stay in your hotel, hop on a hotel shuttle, get to the Mall of America, and um, there's a few must-see things that I recommend at the mall, of course. Nickelodeon is, is always a priority. Sea Life is a hidden gem, yeah. as is Flyover. Those are kind of my favorites, but some fabulous new attractions that have um, just come on board that I'm excited mm -hmm. uh, to uh, experience as well, but those would be my favorites. Good. So the last one's for all three of you, but we definitely need to get back the hidden gem. If you remember that hamburger joint that you went to, we definitely want to share yes. that with our listeners. Yes. So that's right. So keep thinking about that. Um, so for all okay. three of you, yeah. describe Bloomington in just three words. Dan, you go first. Um, exciting. Family friendly. That's two words, but I'm hyphenated. counting it as one. It's okay. hyphenated, well, hyphenated. So it's one yeah. word. Exciting family friendly and um, another hyphenated word center of the universe to quote a former mayor of the Bloomington. <laughs> that was a very hyphenated. Mayor, mayor Winstead, that was for you. Uh, yeah. Former mayor Winstead. No, I, I actually think I would say um, unexpected because I think people in, in Mall of America, there's a lot of unexpected things that people experience, but also within the city of Bloomington, people don't realize how easy it is to get here, how easy it is to park here and the wonderful people. Fantastic. I'm going to go with convenience, fun, vibrant. I like it. Yep. I'll go with affordable, unique, mm -hmm. and close. I like it. Wow, so I'm the only one who didn't follow the rules. Yeah. yeah, that's not surprising, Dan. That happens frequently. You've given us permission. Now, Those are right? great descriptors, and I think we are just, in general, Bloomington is a hidden gem. People, yeah. And we're so accessible being close to the international airport, literally across the interstate, and within 10 minutes you can be door-to-door. -door and being able that's to have right. that vision from the very beginning of developing Mall of America so close to the airport also is a very important factor for you in what you guys do every single day. So... Help us better understand what does a Convention and Visitors Bureau do? What is your ultimate role for the city? We talked about, you know, the, the key highlights of Bloomington and what you market, but what does that role look like for your responsibilities? So, Bonnie, why don't you start? Sure. So, um, our job is to market the destination, sell the destination, if you will. So, we really want people to come and uh, stay in yeah. Bloomington. So, when you come to Minnesota and more importantly to the metro area, we think that this is the place to stay. And so we promote 
Bloomington to the world. And what makes it um, easy 